few months ago I made a pair of videos about painting every legion in the Horus Heresy. The intention of these videos was to help myself and others get a sense of the character and feel of each legion and to get inspired to choose an army. People seem to really like it, but with me just being one person and with 18 legions to cover, it was only so deep I could go into each one to show what they're about and how cool they are. So today what I've done is I've chosen 18 of my favorite creators from around the internet who specialize in each legion to show you the incredible potential of these different armies. I'll include links below to where you can find everybody's work and I encourage you to go check them all out after the video. Let's get right into it, starting with the first legion, Dark Angels. My choice for the first is Lucas Frotchek, who posted his incredible Dark Angels army over on Instagram. Two reasons I've chosen Lucas. First, I think his color scheme is absolutely perfect. Muted, gritty, and desaturated. And second, his attention to detail really elevates the army. Just look at the incredible cloth texture on these inner circle knights. Or check out the beautiful freehand check patterns all over his legionaries. It's just exactly how the Dark Angels should look. Next up were the Incredible Emperor's Children by Nagrakali Love Songs. With some impressive conversion work and meticulous paint jobs, these Emperor's Children capture the unique character of the Third Legion better than anyone else I've seen. He's got some really great takes on some of the classic Emperor's Children characters, and he's made some beautiful, unique characters of his own. Top-notch stuff. The arrogance, the ostentatiousness, the splendor, the absolute degeneracy of the Emperor's Children are on perfect display here. Bravo. By the way, a lot of these creators have other armies and projects besides what I'm showing them off for today, and I just think I should say I'm not trying to pigeonhole anybody or anything into being associated with one specific Legion. I'm just you know, choosing my favorites for each legion. Next up is James Karch with his Space Wolf army. James has done a really beautiful take on the Space Wolves. It's kind of a middle ground between the crisp, clean, heavy metal style and the gritty, treadhead horse heresy style. I think it looks really awesome. There's something really satisfying about seeing a whole army done in such a crisp, consistent style, but he's also put some beautiful personal touches on there too. Like, just look at the axe on this Contemptor Dreadnought. Realistically, that should be one of the official options available. Awesome stuff. For the 5th Legion, I chose Water Beast's White Scars, which is almost a bit of a misnomer because they're so grim and gritty and grimed up that they're not even really white anymore, which is perfectly fine. If you imagine them at the Siege of Terra, the battlefields choked with mud and ash and they're sallying out and blasting Death Guard into sweaty chunks as they whip past on their speeders and jet bikes, there's no possible way the armor would stay clean. And what can I say, he's done a really lovely job, they look incredible. Next up is the 6th Legion. Look at this beautiful brass scorpion, or this gorgeous warp smith. These alone would make the case for my pick for the 6th Legion, but the reason I chose David Ugolini for the Iron Warriors is for one reason, and it's he is working on the best Primarch I have ever seen in my life. Based on the fantastic illustration of Perturabo by concept artist David Hare, Ugolini has painstakingly converted the Forge World model of Perturabo to match the illustration, and the results are absolutely incredible. The piece is still a work in progress, but it's shaping up to be an absolute masterpiece, and I'm really enjoying watching it come together. You guys should go check it out too. My choice for the 7th Legion is Jonathan Ho, whose Blood Angels have the most beautiful glowing red armor that I've ever seen in my entire life. And if you want to learn to paint armor like this, you're in luck, because he has a YouTube channel as well and he makes tutorials that document his process and techniques. I also just think the aesthetic choice of pairing them with the bright blue bases was really smart, because it just makes them pop. It honestly looks so good that it makes me want to repaint my whole Blood Angels army, which I'm not going to do, because it wouldn't take that long. But no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, maybe one day. Next up is another legion near and dear to my heart, the Night Lords. I've chosen MWH Paints, who's really just knocked my socks off with his Night Lords recently. Between his clever conversion work, grim and grisly details, and incredible photography, he's really nailed it. If you're interested in the 8th Legion, go check out some of the work he's done here with sculpting on the bits of flayed skin, and using bits from Warcry kits and things to personalize his army. He's really captured the cruelty and terror of the Night Lords Legion in a way I've never seen done so well before. Stuff like this is just so dangerous to me as a hobbyist because it makes me want to start another army. And the last thing I need is another project on my plate. But luckily I can live vicariously through some of these other people. The Ninth Legion Astartes are the Imperial Fists, and if you're looking for some inspiration for your yellow boys, you can't do much better than multiple Slayer Sword winner Richard Gray. Every single one of his paint jobs is absolutely breathtaking, and the most incredible thing is how quickly he seems to paint things to the standard. 
This is another artist on this list who has a YouTube channel of his own, and you can go watch him explain his recipe and process for getting these incredible results. It's really cool to see how somebody who can paint things to the highest standard in the world approaches painting multiple things at once like an army. He really makes it look easy. And I mean, he makes it look really good too, obviously. Next on our list is the Iron Hands, and my choice for the 10th Legion is the Company of Bitter Iron. There's so much to love here. Creative conversions, incredible weathering, atmospheric photography, gorgeous freehand painting, the amount of individuality and character that each miniature is given, it's just straight up inspiring. I love the color scheme they've chosen too. The bright green contrasts so nicely with the creams and blacks and the weathered metals. It's hard to imagine Iron Hands executed any better than this. So, we're more than halfway through the Legions now, we've seen some incredible stuff and there's some incredible stuff to come, but if you're feeling inspired already and want to get out there and play some more games, maybe you should check out today's sponsor, Voxlink. Voxlink is an app that allows you to connect with other players in your area so you can find games near you. You can sort by which games you want to play, location, and level of play, such as competitive or casual. Currently, in my experience, if you want to find a game, you have to leave a message in a bunch of different Facebook groups or Discord chats, and the messages might get buried or never responded to, and it's really not purpose-built for finding games to play and matching up players. The whole process is just more trouble than it should be. The team behind Voxlink includes Constantine from the Magnet Baron, who's been a sponsor on this channel before, and I know him personally to be passionate about wargaming, and I think he's the right person to pull this off. The app will be free to use, but if you back the Kickstarter now, you can get a great deal on a premium membership which will give you discounts with participating retailers and local partners in your area, and a ton of other features. So go check out the Kickstarter in the link below, and if you're interested, pitch in a few bucks to support it, because I think it's something that could really benefit the community if we can give it the momentum it needs. Thanks Voxlink for sponsoring this video. I'm really looking forward to it launching, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on there as well. Now let's get back to these legions. Alright, the 12th legion, Angron's boys. I've chosen Chalaska84, who's got a really nicely executed army in the early heresy world eater scheme. One of the things that's really common in Horus heresy bases are other marines getting killed, but usually the marines are from another legion. I like that what he's done here is he's got uh, this contemptor is just so angry that he's killing one of his own guys. Classic world leaders. Next up, the Poster Boys. 13th Legion are the Ultramarines, and my choice is Christopher Shu from Dorne's Arrow. This guy has really mastered the painting of blue armor and rich golds. He's got a squad of these custom true scale Terminators, and I don't know where they're from, but they're beautifully rendered and really cool looking. Just look at this banner. It has the look of an incredible freehand, but I dug through the comments and it's actually a transfer that's overpainted and touched up to have some of that freehand look. Now that's a 10,000 IQ move. Very good stuff. Legion the 14th, the Death Guard. For the Death Guard, I chose Manel at MP Miniatures' incredible army. This one was an easy pick. I've been following him for a while and he's a really special talent. Not only is he a great painter, but a lot of his models feature customized bits that he's designed and printed himself. I'm also a huge fan of the jungle terrain that he's built to accompany his army. This is a great example of how terrain in a complementary color to your army can make something go from really good to truly special. It's also allowed him to take some really awesome photos of his army that are just super inspiring and really gorgeous. For the 15th Legion, I chose Adam Cherchevsky's Thousand Sons. This has everything I could want from a Thousand Suns army. Beautiful candy apple red armor, pearly white accents, and an incredible attention to those Egyptian details that bring out the character of the Legion. Just look at this scratch-built Dreadnought Force weapon, made to look like it's inlaid with precious stones and gems, and then he's done this beautiful dark green marble pattern down here. Mm. Just going really above and beyond. Look at something as simple as this transfer on this tank door. Adam's painstakingly painted over all the gold bits so they match the cooler gold tone for his army. This is really high level stuff guys. Really, really cool. Next up are the Legion of Horus Lupercal himself, the Sons of Horus. My choice for the 16th Legion is another incredible Slayer Sword winning artist, Andy Wardle from Cult of Paint. There's a very simple reason why I chose Andy Wardle for this. The Sons of Horus Contemptor Dreadnought that he painted is, no joke, my favorite miniature of all time that I've ever seen, ever. Seriously. Something about the highlight on the torso going from the cool shadow to that warm, bright point of light just does it for me. The chipping and the weathering. Andy has proven with this model the adage that less is more, 
and the lack of sculpted detail allowed him to do this beautifully subtle chipping and staining. This model actually single-handedly turned me into a Sons of Horus player, and now I have like 2,000 points of Sons of Horus painted up. Not to Andy Wardle level, obviously, but I'm pretty stoked about them still. And the cherry on the top is that there are tutorials on the Cult of Paint YouTube channel that go over Andy's process for this Contemptor and how to paint regular Marines and also the Black Sons of Horus scheme for the Justerin. And it's absolutely top shelf stuff, so go check it out. You couldn't learn from somebody better if you're interested in this Legion. I chose Tyrion Silence's Word Bearers for my pick for the 17th Legion, mostly because of the cool edits he does. Look at this photo right here. Caption. All I ever wanted was the truth. That's the most word bearers thing I've ever seen. I love it. I think he nailed it. Here's another example of someone who just really gets what a legion is all about. Liam paints stuff's salamanders. Between the custom sculpted lizard skin tabards, the gorgeous heat bloom effects on the weapons, the red hot lava casting a fiery glow and sooty weathering, if you want to see a master's take on the salamanders, look no further than right here. For the Raven Guard, I chose the incredible works of Norris and Crusoe. Norrison has the kind of skill with a brush that makes miniatures look larger than they actually are. Because he'll do things like painting several layers of texture and reflection on the simplest details. He does all kinds of wonderful character pieces, but his work on the Raven Guard are some of my favorite. Just look at the Sky Earth non-metallic metal on this gun. It's so good, it makes me feel physically ill. Bravo, man. And last but not least, we have Carlin Grimm's Alpha Legion. This is a perfect execution of what might be my favorite armor tone in all of the Horus Heresy, the blue-green metallic armor of the 20th. Add in a gorgeous, vibrant plasma glow, some rich red bases, and what we have here is the type of army that you can just drink in with your eyes for hours. Absolutely stunning. And there you have it guys, my top picks for who I think you guys should follow for each of the Space Marine Legions. As you can see, this hobby is absolutely stacked with some of the most mind-blowing talent you've ever seen, and I hope you guys get some of the same inspiration that I get by seeing some of these masters doing their work. Please check out the Kickstarter for Voxlink in the description below as well. Thanks for tuning in guys, and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.